Hey everyone. Well, it's December 2012 and I just want to uh, talk about something here. I know it's a little gross, but it's for science and for education purposes. So I was wondering a few months ago if you could use urine in an HHO generator or just put it under electrolysis and what would be produced. So I did a little research and online and I saw that the University of Ohio has been working on this. And there's, a, a, I think, a, a few other people that have been uh, playing around with this. I'm surprised that it's not more uh, prevalent and more people aren't trying this stuff out. But anyway, I did the, the research and I got some information on the gas itself. So on the anode, it's N2K2CO3. And on the cathode, we have H2. And so our hydrogen is on the cathode. Uh, which is usually negative, and that's the same as in um, electrolysis. Now, so we have uh, potassium carbonate and hydrogen uh, are some of the gases there. So when it's burned, I'm not sure um, what the actual um, then byproduct or the uh, waste product would be. So from a little bit of the research that I did, uh, there's no purification of the of the liquid, so it doesn't have to be filtered or anything. And you don't need any catalyst in with the actual liquid, so it's ready to go. You just you just pour it in; it's ready to go. The uh, output gas doesn't need to be uh, purified. Uh, no further purification of the gas. And now it will, the process, the electrolysis process will start much earlier, much lower voltage than, than with water and a catalyst. It's only 0 0.37 volts for urine, unlike water um, is 1.23 volts. So there's a lot lower voltage. Now this has a, a big advantage because of the plate. So inside the generator, your plates, uh, which are usually made of stainless steel, what happens is with the voltage any higher than 1.23 or 1.48 volts, so the actual steel will start breaking down. So the plates will start breaking down. So by using urine, it actually uh, is beneficial somewhat uh, instead of going into the municipal uh, the sewer system and has to be then filtered out um, at the wastewater facilities. And so it's actually uh, a good way of then converting it into a usable gas. So now with making HHO gas, uh, what they're doing is they're taking water and then they're mixing in a catalyst. And the catalyst is basically to lower the resistance of the water. Water has a, a very high resistance, so it does not conduct very easily. So when you put electricity into your anode and the cathode, it won't produce any uh, uh, hydrogen and oxygen. But when you put a catalyst in there, it then lowers the resistance and allows the current to then flow. So then you get your gas uh, production. So you're, they're using basically baking soda, salt, things like that. So now with this, it's a little different than the HHO because I'm, when I turn this on, so you can see right now that it's starting to uh, produce gas and it's foaming a lot. So there's a lot of foam that's produced. Now I put some of the magic liquid into my first HHO generator that I made. It's, it's a really old one, it's a spiral cell. And I'm just gonna turn it on and show you how, how this stuff uh, reacts. There we go. Okay, so now you can see the, um, so it's on now and you can see the, I can't really zoom in that close, but you can see it, the gas coming off and it foams up a lot. Um, so there's no catalyst whatsoever in urine. It's just, you can just put it in straight. So you don't have to worry about that, mixing anything into it. So you can see here with no catalyst at all, the urine is drawing that amount of current. So, um, and that's no current. And those plates are spread apart quite far in that um, HHO generator there. It's a really uh, 
crappy built one, it's it's not very good. Now, this doesn't mean that if you had a dry cell or an HHO, it's going to work with this because it's probably going to be the the resistance is probably going to be too low uh, for using with an HHO generator. So your plates are going to have to be spread apart probably farther using this because it conducts uh, fairly well. So the whole time while these uh, things are on, you're always worried about it actually popping because all it takes is one spark uh, in there and then the whole thing, and it's loud. It's really loud when these things go off. And um, so that's what you're always a little nervous about when you're doing this. Okay, so I'm going to grab some of that off the top there. Okay. So we've got a nice little pile there. Okay, so we have quite a bit of foam action going on here. And um, you can see, if I zoom in here close, you can see there's larger bubbles are coming up on the top. It actually pushed a, a twig, a cedar twig up. So it actually can support so this is basically a fuel here, and it's pretty pretty crazy. Uh, but it seems the longer you let this stuff, it, it seems to down near closer to the bottom of the actual um, generator, the bubbles are larger. So I'm guessing it's going to be quite a quite a little pop here with these larger bubbles. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, so I'm going to switch this off now and carefully scoop this stuff up um, because if there was a static discharge, then uh, there goes my generator and <laughs> it's not fun. So, especially when it's made of glass, I don't recommend making one with glass. Um, I don't recommend doing this at all. So. Don't play around with this stuff. We'll scoop up some of this here. Seems to fall. There we go. Doesn't seem like much on the camera, but there's quite a bit there. Okay, so we got... It's hard to get these matches going. That packed a punch. Now that's what I'm talking about. So now uh, the big question is what can you do with this? And of course all the HHO guys are trying to run internal combustion engines off of the oxygen, oxyhydrogen. So now to run an engine uh, strictly off this gas or off HHO gas and not have any other source of energy going in is to me, I don't want to burst anyone's bubble, but it, it doesn't, it, it's not realistic because you have to produce the electricity to make the gas. And because of that, you have heat loss from the generator, number one. Then you're going to have energy loss, heat loss from the actual HHO generator. So then you've already lost a percentage of, of energy there. And then you have to then try to run the fuel, the engine, not lean. You have to, the engine has to be able to run where it can actually power something. It can't be just a barely running and keeping itself going. If that, if that's even, that's not even really possible in, in my understanding. But you could maybe then have a battery bank and then run the vehicle off of the batteries and basically you'd be converting a internal combustion engine or a gasoline powered car into an electric car but you're just doing it through conversion you're just doing it through a conversion of energy you're just converting one form of energy into another 
and it, this is doesn't really solve anything. It, it's just uh, in one way, it, it's an easy way of converting a car to electric. It, this is just a theoretical uh, way, and it, 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 that's basically all it would be good for, because the like I said, you still have to produce the the gas from electrical source. And even if you had solar panels, if you had enough of them to, to then make enough gas to run an engine, you'd need enough panels. Uh, you'd be driving, you'd be a, basically a, a rig, uh, like, a, like a trailer on the back of a transport, going down the road just to make enough gas to keep the engine idling. So, you know, so please don't try this at home. Let the HHO guys uh, play around with this stuff. They've been doing this for a long time. And any little mistake you do, if you have a static discharge or you have a spark inside of your generator, uh, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to rupture. And especially this one being glass, this is not a good choice at all. So that was just a video showing how uh, urine or pee could be used as, uh, to produce hydrogen. And thank you for watching.